welcome back to this lecture on microcontroller and its applications and today we'll discuss about serial communication using m051 microcontroller so um, let's see what serial communication so serial communication we know the basics of it from our past experience using microprocessor and all is a process by which we can transmit a data bit by bit from a place to another device now serial communication is everywhere whether it is mobile transmission whether it is transmission from a computer to an any external device like a usb or anything it happens serially whether it is a control port control using rs232 rs422 or whether it is a usb device universal serial bus no every almost all the transmissions happen serially so basically there are some baud rates which are standard baud rates which need to be used to, to transfer a data serially from one device to another especially when you are transferring a data to a computer these standard baud rates have to be strictly followed so that you do not uh, so that your computer accepts the data that you transmit so let's see what are these baud rates and we can see on the screen some of these baud rates are uh, 9600 bits per second, 4800 bits per second, 2400 bits per second etc. These are some of the standard baud rates which need to be used if you want to transmit a data especially to a system or from the system if you want to transmit data to any other device. These standard baud rates have to be used. Now your serial communication configuration in 8051 will allow you to generate standard baud rates also that you can communicate effectively to any external device from to your or you can connect to, you can communicate to your system so let's see how does it happen so you have an internal clock frequency of your microcontroller which is given using your access clock later and whenever you do a serial communication and whenever you have to use a standard baud rate you have to use your oscillators very carefully and the oscillator that you need to choose is 11.0592 megahertz as you can see over here it, is, it should be chosen as 11.0592 megahertz so if you choose 11.0592 megahertz then you can do serial transmission quite effectively now you know serial communication is actually dependent upon your timer circuit especially your timer mode 1 configuration timer 1 in mode 1 configuration so your timer 1 in mode 1 configuration is what actually provides the baud rate or what actually facilitates the baud rate generation for serial communication. So it naturally it will be divided, your oscillator frequency will be divided by 12. So when you divide 11.059 to megahertz by 12, the resulting frequency that you get is 921.6 kilohertz. Now your internal UART circuitry or the universal asynchronous reception transmission circuitry divides this baud rate by 32 to give you in turn 28,800 hertz which is available for serial transmission. Now if you divide this number by 3 further you get you arrive at the standard baud rate of 9600. So this is the basic logic of generating a standard baud rate. We will also see a formula for easier tabulation and understanding of how a baud rate is generated using your 8059. Let's go ahead. So, as we know that your serial communication requires certain register for configuration as well as transmission. Now, SPUF is one of the special function register into which, which is called a serial buffer register, into which whenever you write the data, it will be transmitted. It will start transmitting from your transmitter pin on port 3. And whenever you have a data which you get received on the receiver pin of 8051, it will be stored in serial buffer register. So that is what is SBUF. So whenever you want to transmit, the data has to be written into SBUF register. And whenever data is, is written into SBUF register, the data starts getting transmitted provided, transmitted provided your uh, serial communication configuration is done in 8051 microcontroller. The other register we should be configuring is serial control register. SCON. Now in SCON you can see certain pins, bits like SM0, SM1 which are used for selecting the modes of uh, modes of serial communication. There are four modes of serial communication. You will see that 
SM2 is for multiprocessor communication. We'll leave it for uh, another time. It is not within the scope of this lecture. Receive enable REN is a pin when set. It allows your microcontroller to receive data. Then you have uh, to enable or disable reception. Then we have TB8 that is transmit bit 8, which is used for doing a 9 bit communication in serial communication mode to transmission. And transmit interrupt and receive interrupt, these two are important. Transmit interrupt is a flag that is set by 805 microcontroller to notify that an 8 bit data has been transmitted. And receive interrupt is a flag which is raised by 805 microcontroller again to notify that an 8 bit data has been received received into the serial buffer at this time. So that is what is transmit interrupt and receive interrupt signals or bits or flags that are being in use. So all these bits are bit addressable so you can program directly by notifying your bits. So that is what is SCON register. In detail as you see serial communication modes can be decided by SM0 and SM1 pin. If both of them are set at 0, 0 you have serial communication mode 0 which is shift register mode serial communication mode 1 which is the most standard baud rate generator mode or the mode that we will mostly be programming with is uh, serial mode 1 which is an 8 bit data which transmits an 8 bit data asynchronously so when you have an asynchronous transmission you have a stop bit and one start bit and serial mode 2 is selected when SM0 is 1 and SM1 is 0 and serial mode 3 in 1 and 1 so, so this is and the other pins as we uh, discussed so this is for the serial communication registers which are required for configuring SCON and SPAF, serial control and serial buffer register. So programming uh, serial communication for standard baud rate transmission is very simple. It's uh, all you have to do is start by finding a value to be put in register TH1 to generate a baud rate. Remember it is finding a value to be put in register TH1 to generate a baud rate. So, so TH1 is the value. So as you can see here formula TH1 is that value which you need to find out by if you have the baud rate, baud rate standard baud rate is 9600 bits per second which is most widely used for serial transmission. If you put 9600 baud bits per second and you put S mod, S mod is a bit that you can find in register P con or control register. Um, you can assume it to be 0 or 1. It is also used as a frequency divider. We'll discuss about it later. An oscillator frequency, of course, should be 11.0592. If you substitute all this value, you will get the value of TH1. And this TH1 value you have to load to get an appropriate baud rate. Now, once you load this TH1 value, you have to configure your timer mode register to work in timer 1 in mode 1 configuration. Then you have to load your serial control register with the value so that you will enable or disable your transmitter and receiver operation. Now TR1 is set so that you will start running your timer 1 because that is what facilitates your baud rate generation for serial communication. Now then once your TR1 bit is set your serial communication starts and then you have to check for transmit interrupt flag. Transmit interrupt flag is, is, uh, is cleared by an instruction clear DI. Once the transfer interrupt is finished, that is once the byte of data has been transferred, this flag has to be cleared. Now whenever a, a byte of data has to be transmitted, it is always stored in SPUF register. And whenever a transmit a data is received, it is stored in S SPUF register again. So physically there are two different registers, but they are addressed by the same address. Okay. So this is what, how you basically program a serial communication for transmitting as well as receiving. So let's see uh, how to uh, double your baud rate. So there are two ways to increase the baud rate of data transfer that is by meddling with this pin called S mod. So as you can see, you know the formula that is F baud is equal to power S mod. Uh, this is the formula to power S mod divided by 32 into oscillator frequency divided by 12 into 256 minus TH one. Now whenever you meddle with this value S mod, S mod can either double or it can uh, cut the baud rate by half. So there are two ways to increase the baud rate. Use a high frequency crystal, of course, you can increase your crystal frequency 
or your set frequency or you can change the pattern p contact is there you will understand this when you do a problem okay so this is how the basically if s mod value is 1 it is automatically divided by 16 if s mod value is 0 it is automatically divided by 32 so here we get different baud rates for same value so let's do a problem for you to understand what value should be put in th1 so as to generate a baud rate of 9600 baud using timer 1 assume oscillator frequency to be 11.0592 megahertz so what value remember this formula it's very simple now our requirement here is to find the value of registered th1 so that we generate a value so that we generate a baud rate of 9600 so this is the formula f baud is equal to power s mod divided by 32 into oscillator frequency divided by 12 into 256 minus th1 now s mod if it is not given always assume it to be zero if it is given if it is if they say it is set then assume it to be one okay now here as it is not given we'll assume it to be zero now if it, you assume it to be zero to power zero is one remember and divide by 32 uh, into oscillator frequency as i said for serial communication always the oscillator frequency should be 11.0592 megahertz so 11.0592 into 10 power 6 will be the oscillator frequency baud rate is already given f baud is 9600 baud rate is said to be 9600 now if you substitute all this value and reconfigure this equation to be something like this then just by replacing the values you arrive at the value of th1 to be 253 i personally recommend that you solve it and see okay because there are a lot of opportunity of creating mistake in solving this equation so please it's my kind request that you solve it and see okay so if you solve this you get this value 253 decimal value or fdh fd that is the hexadecimal value now whenever you load this value fd in register th1 you generate a baud rate that is 9600 bits per second or 9600 baud provided your s mod is zero so this is the way you solve this problem uh, just another way of approaching this problem given the value of th1 to be fd that is now the value of th1 is given calculate the baud rate generated for serial communication Assume, assume that the oscillator frequency is 11.0592. It's very simple. F baud is to be calculated. S mod is 0. Oscillator frequency is given to be 11.0592 megahertz. TH1 is given to be FD. If you if you substitute all these values automatically, you come you you be arriving at this value of F baud is equal to 9600 bits per second. It's a very simple way of doing your sum. So let's move ahead with one more program okay now this uh, program uh, here the question given to us is write a program to transfer a letter y serially at 9600 baud continuously i think clock frequency to be 11.0592 megahertz and it's a very simple program provided you understand now you need to know scon register configuration and f baud okay now what is the algorithm as you given here and as we discussed when we were discussing of programming or serial communication uh, ports for transmission of bit we can see here you need to calculate initially the value of th1 to generate baud rate of 9600 baud so just now in the previous two problems we calculated that value of th1 that was nothing but fd anyway the equation is here if you find this equation you can calculate the value of th1 because you know f baud value to be 9600 uh, replace all the other values you'll get the value required and the value mostly that you'll get is fd provided s mod value is zero so once you calculate the value of th1 configure your t mod register so that you will operate timer one in mode one configuration because timer one in mode one configuration is what facilitates clock frequency for serial communication then you have to load th1 with the calculated value that is your fd uh, so that it will start giving a baud rate of 9600 bits per second load scon value scon value has to be loaded now sm0 and sm1 because it is going to operate in mode 1 has to be 0 and 1 has to be 0 and 1 now sm2 has to be 0 because we are not using a multiprocessor mode receive enable has to be 1 and rest all bits has to be 0 so anyway you have to load a value 5 that is 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 into the uh, 0 1 0 1 and 0 0 0 0 
into SCON so that you'll get your serial control register configured for serial communication. Then you have to start your timer one so that it will start the timer to transmit or to facilitate water generation. Once you start your timer, you load the value of your SBUF register, that is serial buffer register, with the value you need to transmit. Here the value we need to transmit is Y. So load it with the value Y. Now once you load it with the value Y, you know that the value Y or it's an 8-bit data which will start getting transmitted. And once an 8-bit of data is transmitted, your transmit interval flag is set. Once the transmit interval flag is set, you know what the data of Y has been sent once and then you have to clear the transmitter flag and you have to repeat this step from 6 onwards again and again so that you will send this value continuously. So as per the algorithm, just write your program. So as we said, configure t mod register. So to configure t mod register, move the value hash to 0. That is to set timer 1 in mode 1 configuration. Then load the value of th1. So move th1, comma hash fd. Then load serial control register with the configuration. So load SC, serial control register with hash 50 or you are loading an MED data 50 into serial control register. Then we have to start the timer 1. So set B, TR1, TR1 is timer run bit 1 to run your timer 1. And then move the value 0 Y. Uh, y is the data you need to transmit serially. So this value, move this value Y into your buffer register. Then Check for transmitter flag set. Now a transmitter flag will be set once the 8-bit data is transmitted. So until that happens, you keep on checking. So once the transmitter flag is set, you know 8 bits of data has been set, clear transmitter flag, then again follow this process. So this is how you keep on continuously transmitting the data serially according to this algorithm. So it's a very simple program provided you understand the basic concept. I believe you understood the basic concept of serial communication. Remember, serial communication happens with standard baud rate. To generate standard baud rate, you need to operate your serial communication port of 8051 in time in mode 1 configuration. And in mode 1 configuration, you have this formula F baud is equal to power S mod divided by 32 and the oscillator frequency divided by 12 into 256 minus TH1. You calculate the baud rate using the TH1 value loaded. And then you have other modes of operation like shift register mode and uh, multiprocessor mode which you don't mostly use it. So configure your serial communication and serial control and serial buffer register. Serial buffer register is the register into which whenever you input a data it starts transmitting and whenever you receive a data also you receive it into serial buffer register. So understand this basic concept. If your basic understanding of serial communication port and its configuration is clear, any type of program you'll be able to do in serial communication for 8051. Thank you.